Let's consider the exponential function. Now the exponential function it looks like this. fx is equal to b to the power of x, a base with an exponent. Now, I'm just going to change it to y is equal to b to the power of x. So let's just express it as a sentence. So what is the answer? Okay, in other words, y, if we have a base b to the power of x. There we go. That is the question that I ask if I see that. Okay, What is the answer? In other words, what's the value of y if b has an exponent of x? So for example, 8 is when I take 2 to the power of 3. So the answer is 8 if I have 2 to the power of 3. Now what would be the inverse of that question? Well, the inverse of that question would be what exponent or power what exponent must I give and again the question or the answer to the question will be the answer for the value for y okay so what exponent must I give a base to get an answer of x. Okay, so here we asked for the answer and therefore the answer got the y value. This time we're asking for the exponent, so the exponent gets the y value. So actually what's happened here is it's the same question just this time uh, or the same expression this time it's x is equal to b to the power of y. In other words, x is the answer, now y is the exponent, and b is still the base. Now this is therefore the inverse. Do you see we swapped x and y around? Okay, this is the inverse of the exponential function. And if we need to do the second step now, remember the first step is swap x and y around. The second step is solve for y. Now we have a little bit of a problem because it is impossible with arithmetic, in other words with plus, minus, multiply and divide, it is impossible to solve y to get them out of the exponent. So to solve that problem we define a new function called the logarithm. Logarithms. And this is what a logarithm is. A logarithm says that if I have that there, it has an interior and an answer. And here it has a little base. Now that base still refers to our original B. Our base comes there. Inside we put the answer. In other words, what exponent must we, let's go up a bit, what exponent must we give a base to get an answer of x? So in here we'll put the answer x. And the value or the result of this function gives us the exponent that we must give for b to get x. So that would be y for this question. Okay, so let me do an example and then you see it's actually, I've probably explained it much more complicated as it is. So if I have 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8 and I have to write that in its logarithmic form. This is exponential form. And if I had to write that in a logarithmic form I would say okay the log of base 2 okay, gives me an answer of 8 if it has an exponent of 3. So if I didn't know this part, 
if they just asked me to get the answer here, I would ask the question, what exponent must I give 2 to get an answer of 8? And we know the answer is 3. So let's do a few more. How about log 327? What exponent must we give 3 to get 27? Well, we give it exponent 3. 3 to the power of 3 is 27. Let's do one more. Log of 0, 0,5 to give me 4. What exponent must I give 0, 0,5 to get an answer of 4? Hmm. Well, 1 over 5 sorry 1 over 2 1 over 2 to the power of something must give me 4 well we know if we swap this around our exponent must get a negative so 2 over 1 to the power of negative x is equal to 4 so 2 to the power of negative x must equal 4. So what must x be? Well, 2 to the power of 2 will give me 4, so x must be negative 2. And that's my answer, negative 2. So 0, 0,5 to the power of negative 2 will give me 4. And finally, what would be log of 100? Do you notice I have no base? If no base is written, it means it's a base 10. So, 10 to the power of what will give me 100? Well, that's quite easy too. 10 to the power of 2. Well, that is the logarithm. Let's, in the next video, look at the graph of the logarithmic function.